about 9, 13 a.m. right now, and today is gonna be a day of grinding. That's really what computer science majors do and a lot of college students do. There's not gonna be a whole lot of fun things today. It's mostly gonna be me getting my way through my to-do list for the week and catching up on things and trying to get ahead because tomorrow is the Super Bowl and I really don't wanna do work tomorrow. Anyways, for breakfast, we got Greek yogurt, peanut butter, berries, and honey. Very classic. Right now, what I'm gonna do is eat my breakfast and then make my to-do list, and then we can actually get started on doing the work that we have to do today. And you guys will finally get to see what a CS major actually does and whether or not we actually do any work. Here's my to-do list for the day. It's very basic. Film my vlog, do my physics homework, watch some history lectures to review for a test on Tuesday, do my linear algebra homework, work on some coding side projects, and that's about it. To the coding projects part, I'm actually gonna explain what I'm doing so you can understand what a CS major actually does when it comes to CS related things. But as for now, if you're in college, you have a lot of classes that aren't related to your major and you gotta get them out of the way, so here I go. physics, it's 1041. I spent like 30 minutes on one problem because I kept answering in coulombs when I should have been answering in nano coulombs and I didn't realize because the text was cut off. So I'm very annoyed about that. But I'm done with physics homework now and now I'm going to go watch some history lectures and get caught up on that. So I'm ready for my exam on Tuesday. And after that, we'll figure out what to do for lunch. I just finished up history. It is noon now, or is it? It's 12.15, basically still noon. Anyways, I finished history, so I'm going to go to get lunch. But before I go to get lunch, let's hear a word from the amazing sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. Out of all the successful people I know, the one thing they have in common is that they learn something new every day, and you should be learning something new every day too. Brilliant.org is a great way to do this. There are awesome math and computer science lessons that are all interactive and are a great way for building your foundations and problem solving skills. There are thousands of lessons ranging from foundational math like Algebra 1 to more advanced math classes like multivariable calculus and linear algebra to computer science like algorithms, AI, and neural networks, and even physics classes if you're interested in that. Now you might be saying, hey Sid, I don't really have a lot of time to learn something new every day in between courses and work, and I say you do. All of Brilliant's lessons are bright-sized and you can check them out anytime during the day, even when you're standing in line at the grocery store on your phone. Isn't that awesome? I also really like their Algorithms Fundamentals course because of how good it is at exposing intuition behind some of the important concepts in computer science and setting you up for success when you go on to study more advanced algorithms. So if you're interested in computer science, I would say you go check that course out right now because it's awesome and I highly recommend it. If you actually want to sign up for Brilliant, which you should, then you should go check out this link, brilliant.org slash the time bay, and you'll get a 30 day free trial. And if you're among the first 200 people to use the link to sign up, you'll get 20% off your first year annual subscription. Once again, thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Wondering what I use to take notes? It's called Obsidian. Just look at how clean it is. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah, I love Obsidian. I've been using it for years. It's great. It's lightweight markdown editing. It's very CS majory, if that makes sense. But yeah, I love Obsidian. Anyways, let's go get some lunch. I just warmed up my chicken that I made a few days ago. I don't know if it looks good to you guys or not, but trust me, it tastes great. I wish there was like smell o vision or something. If somebody invented that, that would be great because then you guys could smell how good it is and then get jealous and then I would feel cooler. But I'm gonna eat this, demolish it, probably just by itself because it's a lot and I need to get it done with by today. And then after that, I'm gonna sit down and grind my linear algebra homework and tell you guys what the difference between this linear algebra is and the first linear algebra class that I took. All right. Eating time, finish lunch, and it's time to start doing my linear algebra homework. Let's talk about it. So this is what my homework actually looks like. I hope you can read that, and I don't know if you can. But anyways, there's a little bit of a weird thing that Georgia Tech does with linear algebra. So we have two linear algebra courses. We have Math 1554 and then Math 3406. Math 1554 is something every computer science major has to take. You usually take it in like your first two semesters. I took it in my first semester and it's very computational focus. So if you can do like row reductions and stuff, you'll probably do fine in the class. And it's very like concrete just with applications. This is how you can use it in engineering context. Then the second class, Math 3406, is what CS theory threads have to take. And at Georgia Tech, we have threads, which are like specializations, and theory is just the theoretical aspects of computer science, and Math 3406 is also what math majors take for linear algebra. But basically, it's just more proof. Okay, so I got my linear algebra homework done. I wrote up the solutions to the problems. I think they're okay, but I don't know. It's due in a few days anyway, so I have time. 
Right now, I'm gonna start working on writing some Go code and following along with the book that I really like called Writing an Interpreter in Go, and that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be building an interpreter in Go. As a CS major here at Georgia Tech, the way I've picked my threads means I actually won't take any classes about compilers or operating systems and all of that, or anything about like programming language theory. So I'm gonna try and assimilate that knowledge to like external resources. And let's talk about that book right now, actually. This is the book, it's called Writing an Interpreter in Go by Thorsten Ball. It's very, very cool. I've only read a little bit of it so far, but I'm really enjoying it. And it's basically exactly what it says. It takes you from zero to hero in terms of writing an interpreter in Go. You design your own programming language, or while well, you follow along with the design of the programming language in the book, but you learn a lot about how programming languages are designed, grammars, lexers, parsers, and all of that. And then there's a second part to this book called Writing a Compiler in Go, where you take that interpreter, interpreted language, and then you turn it into a compiled language for some efficiency boost. It's very cool, and I'm gonna start coding for the first time in a while. yet, but it can tell you what the tokens are in a line. So we have a let literal and identifier x, which is just like a variable name, an assignment operator, and then we also have an actual integer literal value. And it's very cool. It's 419, I'm done coding for right now. I'm probably wanna eat at like 5, 530, so I need to make something with my chicken because I'm bored of just the chicken and I want something to add a little crunch. So let's go see if we can make something like that. Okay, so the idea is we're gonna make some pickled onions. Uh, we got this onion and we're gonna pickle it so I get some crunch and some tang when I'm eating my chicken. <laughs> So I'm not reading, and I'm also not working on my side project, but I'm kind of doing something programming related. I've always wondered what people like so much about Lisp, because as far as I know, I don't know anybody my age that uses Lisp, but a lot of people seem to love it, the people that use it at least. So I looked it up, and then this is what Stack Overflow had to say. Lisp is the Chuck Norris of programming languages. Lisp is the bar other languages are measured against. Knowing Lisp demonstrates developer enlightenment. That's an interesting take, so I'm gonna try and, you know, see what I can learn about Lisp in the next few hours and then make a funny video about it at some point. Change in plans. My friends asked if I would come over to their apartment and watch a movie. So I will go and do that, but I will try and like do some research for videos while I'm there and start writing scripts and stuff. But right now I'm gonna go shave because I feel like it's a little stubble and it's annoying. I'm gonna shave and then I'll head over. Abby, you're doing MATLAB? Bro, this is proprietary, like, code. Oh, don't worry, I'll blur it out, but... Okay. What do you think of MATLAB? MATLAB, bro, it's like, like a, it's like a dumb person's coding language. Jesus Christ. I don't like it. So you're saying all Emmys are dumb? For using MATLAB? Yes. Mm. Damn. Didn't you want to be an Emmy? Don't you still want to be an Emmy? I feel attacked. <laughs> Okay, I'm in their apartment, and even though I already ate chicken, I'm gonna have some more chicken because this is very good Badass. chicken. Badass! Abi charged me twenty-four dollars for this. No, there's bro. no way it's no twenty-four dollars. Uh, I don't know, bro. I just, it's, it's he, he's he's capping. He's robbing me, but it's okay. There you go. All right, there is no way I'm getting any more work done tonight. Wait, so this is the same. Watch this movie. It's the same lobby I'll from set it up. Said it was good. I think I've heard other people say it's good, so it'll hopefully be good. I'm gonna watch it and then head to bed. Peace out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hit that subscribe button. Bye.